we are discussing constructor of a class. Constructor of a class is nothing but ordinary a member function, but this constructor will be invoked by default automatically when an object will be defined under the class and that is a very special feature with the constructor methods. So what is constructor? Constructors are similar to a function or method defined within the class as a member method which is invoked automatically when an object will be created under the class. So let us go for some other features of the constructor. Constructors have the following properties. So the constructor has no return type specification. When we define one constructor, we need not to mention the return type, what is the return type of the constructor. So constructor does not require any return type specification. The name of the constructor must be same as that of the class name. So depending upon the class name, the constructor name will be same as that of the class name, maintaining the uppercase and lowercase letters as usual. Constructors are used to initialize the class members. We can have two types of constructor. One is a parameter as constructor where you are passing some input arguments to the constructor method. Another one is a non-parameter as constructor and this constructor will have no input parameter. These constructors are there to initialize the member variable. So that is the main purpose of a constructor. So when you define one object under the class, then constructor method will get invoked automatically and the constructor will initialize the member variables. If we do not define any constructor, the compiler will automatically generate a default constructor. That means if we do not define any constructor in our program, the constructor will be defined by the compiler that is a non-parameterized default constructor. A constructor should be having the public scope. But sometimes we, for, for some special purposes, so it might be keeping a constructor under the private scope. Say in one design pattern, that is a singleton design pattern, we define our constructor in the private scope, but that is a very special case. We always define our constructor under the public scope. Constructors cannot be inherited. So that's, that's why we're having multiple different properties of this constructor. To have a better idea, let us go for one practical demonstration where we'll be showing that in our Java code, how we can define constructors. In this demonstration, we shall discuss Java constructors. We know that constructors are nothing but functions whose name will be same as that of the class name. Here we have defined one class, the name of the class is account and we have defined three instance variable name, account number and balance. So this is known as the constructor here, we are not passing any parameter. So that's why it is called parameter as constructor whose name will be same as that of the class name where the return type specification is not there, it is under the public section and here we are initializing the instance variable name and account number with the null string and balance with the 0, 0.0. This is another constructor whose name will be same as that of the class name having no return type specification under the public scope and it is parameter as here we are passing three, uh, three uh, parameters that is a string n string id and double b. So now what will happen this name and this account number and this balance they will get uh, updated, they will get uh, initialized with this input parameters and then we are having the set details where we are passing this name and the respective ID. The name and ID will get instantiated, will get updated, will get initialized using the set details. This is my deposit money, where the money whatever will be passing as input argument that will get added with the balance and the balance will be the sum of the previous balance plus the money which is being passed uh, as the input parameter, the value of the money will get added and the new balance will be there and the balance value will get increased in that case. So now there is a get details. Actually the get details means here we are having the display function actually. So it is printing the name, printing the account number and printing this balance with this prompt text here. So it is they are getting concatenated with the respective texts and strings and then the respective values are going to get displayed. So here the name of the class is constructor. So that's why you can find that we are having this constructor.java and under the main function we have defined two objects under the class account and these two objects one has got instantiated with the non parameterized constructor another has got instantiated with the parameterized constructor. So it has gone for the respective name, it has gone for the ID and it has gone for the balance here. But in case of non parameterized constructor we didn't pass anything. 
so the name and the respective balance and the id they were remain uninstantiated balance will be initialized with zero and name and this account number will be having the null only okay next we are calling this set details to to in uh, to initialize this uh, corresponding name and the id and deposit money here we are passing this deposit money as 6000 in double and this is account scc1 that is the first object which is having non parameterized so in this way we are initializing or we are initializing this name and the id and passing this value so what will happen the balance will be equal to 0, 0.0 plus 6000.0 so that balance will get updated with the 6000 value ultimately after doing the addition so now we are going to print the account one details so the method will be get details we know that get details method is actually printing the name the account number and the balance respectively and this is my scc dot get details so details of the account number two is going to get uh, printed here so let us go for the execution you can find that details of the account number one so details of the account number one this text has got printed so get details is printing the name account number and balance the name account number and balance and details of the account two so this particular string has got printed and it has now after that we have called this scc 2get details so again it is printing the respective name the account number and the balance here so from this respective demonstration from this example you are getting this idea that how the constructor can be defined and how constructor works in java code and we have given you the detail detailing and the respective output while running my code so i think now the conception is getting clear what is the parameter as constructor what is the non parameter as constructor and how to call them and how to use them to instantiate and to initialize our instance variables thanks for watching this video